motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Peace and greetings, family. Have another great episode for you today. We are going to start talking about awakening Kundalini and awakening that life force energy. Not sure how many parts this series is going to be. What I can tell you is that this is um, probably one of uh, the most important discussions that we'll have. So before we get started, let's get into the present moment. Let's get our body, mind, and spirit aligned with this very moment. So we'll take a couple of deep breaths and then we'll get going. So let's breathe. All right, beautiful. All right, so happy hump day to you. Hope your week is going fantabulous. Hope everything is working out in your favor. And I hope that you are continuing to love on yourself and to love those around you. So again, uh, this series here, not sure how many parts we're going to do, but we're going to talk about awakening Kundalini. This is part number one. Now, the first question you may ask yourself is, uh, what is Kundalini? Kundalini is a uh, Sanskrit word. Comes from the uh, Hindu tradition, Indian tradition. And it has several different meanings. Uh, It means coiled snake. If you uh, look at the medical symbol, the caduceus, You'll see uh, two snakes going up, one on the one side, one on the other side. And that signifies the Kundalini, which is life force energy that goes from the base of our spine, from our root chakra, all the way up to the brain, out through the um, seventh chakra, out through uh, the top of our heads, out to the cosmos. That's what that caduceus symbol signifies. Kundalini is uh, also, you know, believed to be uh, a divine energy. Um, It's also considered a divine feminine energy. Now men, that, that does not mean that you don't want to awaken your kundalini. Just remember, uh, in all forms of life, there's always a masculine. There's always a feminine. So the law of gender exists in everything. All right. So um, the thing that um, I want to share with you is um, Kundalini goes by different different names depending on the country, the culture that you may be in. Um, also in India they call it prana. It's called chi. In um, China, Japan it's called ki. In ancient Kemetic, which we know as modern day Egypt, it's called ka. And also in ancient Kemetic, the terminology that I like, 
that I resonate with because I have uh, communed with this divine goddess. It's also called Sekhmet. Sekhmet. S-E-K-H-M-E-T. Sekhmet energy. So at the end of the day, all of these terminologies mean life force. It means divine energy. And this energy sits inside of you at the base of your spine. There's a reservoir. There's an infinite source of this energy that's sitting and waiting for you to tap into it. And uh, before we get, get uh, any further, I want to talk about, you know, when we look at life physically, mentally, spiritually, you, you have to come to the realization that we are more light than matter. Okay? What do I mean by that? We are more energy, electricity then we are solid matter. We are 99.99999% particles. Okay? Particles, what are particles? Energy, waves, light. We are only 0.00001% solid matter. With that being said, <clears throat> this is why some people say everything is energy, right? We emit electromagnetic field from our bodies, through our thoughts, through our minds, through our experiences. And there is a light spectrum of electromagnetic frequencies that we interact with. You may not be aware of this, but we interact with it. Now, the naked eye, we can only see, as humans, we can only see about 1% visible light. 1%. 1%. And I think this is where they get the fact that we only use, or so-called, only use 1% of our brain. Because we can only see 1% of visible light. These are waves, particles, other electromagnetic fields light we can only see one percent for me i'm interested in that other 99 percent that we can't sense with our five senses with our five senses now understand this we have 360 different senses and most humans are only using five so again, I'm interested in that other 355 as well as the other 99%. I want to dive into that. The whole reason why I came down here to play on Earth was to explore consciousness. This is just my mission, to explore consciousness. Now, with this whole Kundalini life force energy, awakening this energy allows us to explore consciousness, unlike the everyday average human thinking that they are only their physical bodies. So, with that being said, this life force energy that I'm talking about, Kundalini, Sekhmet, Chi, Prana, the first thing that we have to discuss is we have to talk about, because again, if we are just bundles of light, bundles of energy, bundles of electricity, then we have to talk about the different energy centers that are encased within our being. 
So I'm going to talk about the seven main energy centers. You may know them as the seven main chakra centers. Um, but it's imperative that you have a connection and an understanding to that because that this is what's going to allow you to awaken this Kundalini, this life force, this Sekhmet, this Prana. And uh, before I get into the uh, chakra centers, I want to mention, I'm reading this book by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. It's called Becoming Supernatural. And um, let's see, what page is it on? Uh, give me just a second. Let me find the page. Because he talks about he talks about people that have um, healed themselves from different illnesses by awakening their own internal energy. You have to remember, or you have to know, that you have everything within you. You need nothing outside of you. To make you a magnificent being. Healing yourself. Loving yourself. Giving joy to yourself. Every emotion. Every experience that you want to have. You have the ability to manifest that. All you have to do is tap within. Alright, so here it is on page 93. Um, and he's done a lot of, um, a lot of medical back studies to prove uh, these things that he says. So on page 93, third paragraph, he talks about in the community of students who do this work, and when he's saying do this work, he's talking about basically raising Kundalini energy. He does not call it Kundalini, uh, but like I said, it goes by different names, life force, divine energy, whatever it is you want to call it. It's that internal infinite energy that we all have access to. So anyways, in the community of students who do this work, people have healed themselves of chronic bladder infections, prostate problems, impotence, um, Crohn's disease, food allergies, sensitivities to celiac disease, ovarian tumors, elevated liver enzymes, acid reflux, heart palpitations, asthma, lung conditions, back problems, thyroid conditions, throat cancer, neck pain, chronic migraine, headaches, brain tumors, and much more. So I'm not just talking about something, you know, some little thing here. <laughs> I'm talking about self-healing. I'm talking about self-regeneration, uh, rejuvenation, right? Uh, I'm talking about some powerful stuff, okay? So now we have to... Um, tie in the seven main energy centers for you to realize the correlation between you know raising this life force energy and 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 how um that energy can be dormant and can be stuck at the base of your spine and some people you know they live out their entire lives and and they they never awaken this energy because they're not in tune they're not aware all right so now we have the seven main uh, chakra centers. The root chakra uh, being the uh, lowest one, right? Um, and, and that is uh, where the Kundalini sits. If you can imagine like uh, in between your, your uh, hip area. In your hip area, down there is all of this infinite energy that I'm talking about, okay? So your root chakra, it corresponds with uh, your physical instinct, your survival, your security. The endocrine gland that corresponds to that is called the gonads, right? So this is, this is your survival instinct. Your first three chakras down below connect you more to this earth plane, all right? So you're more grounded, as they say, and you're more connected to the earth plane, right? Um, so that's your, that's the root chakra. That's the gonad endocrine uh, gland. And then next up from that, as we get to uh, the sacral chakra, 
right? So this is kind of like uh, right in your in your navel area. Your root chakra is more so your sexual organs, right? The sacral chakra is kind of right behind your navel. So these are your emotions. Uh, this is also uh, sexual creativity. Um, and the endocrine gland that it corresponds to is the, the lit, litten, the litten. So this is uh, mysticism, intimate love. All of this corresponds with the, the sacral chakra, okay? And, and, and your intestines as well, all right? So when you say, man, I had a gut feeling about that, that gut feeling, that's, that's the area where it hits you is in the gut, in the sacral area. And then on up from there is our solar plexus, okay? So this is our uh, third chakra. This is uh, corresponds with freedom, mental function, power. Also corresponds with the uh, uh, adrenal glands. So you got anger, mental processing. This is kind of like uh, where all of the connected, if you look at the nadi system, uh, nadis uh, means uh, all of the nerves that run through our body. If you can uh, in visualize um, the tree of life, if you know what that picture looks like, that tree of life comes from our body, right? That tree of life runs through our body. So all of the nadis connecting all of the nerves and so forth, um, the intersection of all of that is at the solar plexus, okay? So this sits right above the intestines. So it also um, has a lot to do with your digestive uh, system and things like that, okay? So the first three chakras are typically the ones that are most blocked for people and they're not able to awaken this Kundalini energy because these three centers are typically blocked and they can be blocked for various reasons and um, we'll talk about, you know, getting them unblocked but they can, <clears throat> excuse me, they can be blocked up for various reasons, you know, past traumas and different things like that. Like your root chakra, again, you know, we're talking your sexual organs and things like that. So you could have had some type of uh, a sexual addiction, anxiety, confusion, uh, molestation, rape. People that have gone through those types of traumas can have blockages in that area of their root chakra. And then the sacral chakra, you know, we're talking again, emotion, sexual creativity, mysticism, and so forth. This is where we hold guilt. We hold shame. We hold different pain. Um, we may feel unworthy, some type of lack, or we may feel like a victim, right? So all of those emotions are housed in that sacral chakra area. And then with the solar plexus, the solar plexus is where we compete. We compete with other people. You know, we want to control. We're impatient. We got a lot of ego going on, right? So all of that's held in the solar plexus. So all these different emotions that you may be holding on to could block up these chakras and could block your Kundalini life force energy from awakening. All right. Now, uh, I'm not going to be as uh, as detailed in these other chakras. I'm just going to blow through because we're going to really focus in on the first three, because the first three, like I said, is where most people have the most troubles. And once you clear those first three, then the other, you know, uh, four on up the chain, they get automatically cleared. Right. So you really just have to focus in on the first three and clear yourself from those. But then from the solar plexus, we got the heart chakra. Obviously, we're talking unconditional love. This is your thymus gland. So we're talking about love, balance, compassion. This is that heart chakra. This is the fourth uh, center, you know, in the center of your chest where your heart sits. And then next up, we got the throat chakra. This is speech, self-expression. It's the thyroid endocrine gland. This is where your communication sits, right? Your truth, your truth comes from your throat chakra. <clears throat> and then we have obviously the third eye chakra, which is our pineal gland. 
This is um, our psychic, our imagination, our clairvoyance. Um, and this is that pineal gland from the endocrine system. And then we've got our crown chakra. Our crown chakra is our spiritual connection, understanding, knowing, bliss. This is oneness with the universe and everything in the universe. And this is the pituitary gland. Okay. And then if you want to even go higher and say right above the head, outside the body, which the ancient Kemetics call the Ka, that particular chakra connects you with the cosmos, with the Akashic records, with everything past, present, and future. All right. So that's an overview of the main chakra centers. But like I said, with awakening this Kundalini energy, we just really want to focus in on the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and the solar plexus. So this is the, uh, the lower three chakras. So when we, um, when we look at, you know, utilizing uh, this divine energy that we have inside of us, we have to realize, again, blockages can stop this energy flow. So what do we have to do to get rid of the blocks? Well, we, we, have to, um, we have to heal ourselves. And I know it's easier said than done, but I'll give you an example. I had a client of mine. She's a health client. Obviously, I won't mention her name, but she had an issue with the fact that she could, she could never, she, she would lose weight. And then she would just regain it all back. She would lose weight and she would just regain it all back. And she had been doing this for years and years and years and years before her and I started working together. And one of the things that I realized is that when I work with clients, typically um, the problems that I see with people are past traumas. It's typically past traumas. And it's some type of, of a program that they need to erase and delete um, and, and, and embed a new program because the program is stopping them from whatever it is that they want to do. Within her case, she kept yo-yoing, you know, with her weight and she couldn't figure out why. Well, when we got down to the root of the problem and see the root of the problem is always going to align with our energy centers. Every problem that we think we have is, 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 is tied directly into our energy centers because we're energy beings. We are energy beings. There's nothing outside of us that creates any type of problem that we have. Any type of so-called problem that we think we have, it's, it's, it's coming from within. So as we dug deeper, because this is a process that I do with every type of client I have, I don't care if it's a business client, a health client, it doesn't matter, okay? Because at the end of the day, we all work the same. Again, we're energy beings. So as we started doing the internal work with her, because, you know, most, most, most of your health people, they'll just try to take you out on the track and get you to doing some jumping jacks and exercises and things like that. That's not the way I work. I work from the inside out, right? That's how you make long lasting, sustainable changes it's from the inside out. So as we started digging in, started teaching her various uh, meditation practices to number one, open up her channels, open up her energy centers to see where it was. What was the, what was the, the thing? What was the, the issue that kept her going back and forth? What was the program? that she was running that kept her in this loop a yo-yoing with her weight. Well, come to find out she had been tampered with, molested as a child, right? And this was something that she suppressed and she didn't even, you know, um, you know, sometimes some things can happen to us so bad that we will we will suppress it to the point where we, where we get amnesia about it and we really forget about it because we don't want to deal with that pain. And that's exactly 
what happened with this particular client. And so we had to dig that up and we had to uh, give her some practices and some strategies to heal that, right? She had to heal that because what was taking place was because she had been tampered with like that as a child, the weight that she had on her body was protecting her from anybody else looking at her as being attractive, seductive, sexy, or anything like that. That's how she corresponded those two scenarios. And once she was able to recognize that that's what she was doing and had been doing her entire life, and then we were able to, to forgive not only herself, but also the individual that did that to her. And we were able to release that and let that go. Or she was able to release that and let that go into the ether and let karma deal with that. She didn't have to carry that load anymore. Literally, she didn't have to carry that load anymore. She started dropping. She started dropping weight and she started keeping it off because she let that baggage go. So I'm giving you this example because this is an example that plays out in various ways in everybody's life. Everybody is carrying some type of baggage, some type of guilt, some type of shame, some type of anger, some type of hate, some type of jealousy. We all are guilty of this. So until we release that, and sometimes that comes with forgiveness. And you may say, well, how, how can she forgive her abuser? It's not for the abuser, it's for her. She was the one dealing with the ongoing pain. So you're not necessarily forgiving people to forgive them. You're forgiving them so that you can move on. So that you can grow. And so that you can become a better, a new. And again, all of this ties back into these first three chakras. Right? So again, these first three chakras, like I said, the root chakra deals with, you know, sexual things. Anxiety, addiction, molestation, pain. Think about, you know, are there some areas in your life? where you have some things that you're holding on to that's not serving you. That's not serving you. It's 30, 40 years later and you're still angry about a situation that's still hurting you, not anybody else. Then that sacral chakra, guilt, Shame, pain, feeling unworthiness, lack, or feeling like a victim. Think about that. Are you feeling any of those emotions? Have you been holding on to those emotions for years? Well, if you want to awaken this divine energy, this divine life force, this Sekhmet, this Kundalini, this Prana, this Chi. And we have to let it go. And then again, the solar plexus, right? Competition. You're always competing against your neighbor. Control. You want to control every situation, every little bitty thing. Impatient. You just have no patience. None whatsoever. Your ego is out of this world. If those emotions you're dealing with, you're blocking your own divine life force, your own divine energy. So now I'm not, I'm not just going to leave you here. Uh, we're almost at 30 minutes. So we're definitely going to do this in parts. Um, but I'm not just going to leave you with the problem. But what I want you to do is I want you to start thinking about 
some of these emotions that we touched on. And, you know, if you don't journal, maybe you'll maybe you'll buy a notepad and a pen and, and, and start writing down some of these things. What are some of the things that you're holding on to from your childhood, um, from when you were younger in school, from a past relationship, from a past marriage, whatever? What are some of those emotions that you're holding on to right now? I want you to write them down in your notebook. Write them down in your journal. Emotions you're holding on to that's not serving you. That you still feel emotional about. You still feel some type of anger about. I'm talking about something that was over 40 years ago. And you can recall this event like it was yesterday. And still get just as angry, just as pissed off, just as mad. As if it just happened. I want you to write out all of those different events. I want you to write them out on a sheet of paper. Because in the next episode... What we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about clearing. We're going to talk about clearing these blockages. Okay? Because once you clear out all the guck, all the muck, all the crap that's no longer serving you, then you're going to be able to awaken <laughs> This Pandora's box, if you will. This mystical, magical, infinite reservoir of energy. And it's beautiful. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so the next episode, again, here's what I want you to do. This is your homework. I think this is the first time I've given you homework. But this is your homework. If you do not have a journal, go buy you a little notepad. Get a pen. In each of these emotions that I went through in the first three chakras, I want you to write them down. Sexual trauma, guilt, jealousy, envy, unworthiness, competition, ego. I want you to write all of that out. Because we're going to clear all that stuff up. I'm going to help you to awaken your divine life force energy. So we're going to get into that on the next episode. And um, we're going to um, also touch on... What was the other... Oh, well, I'll give you that in the next episode. I'll give you that in the next episode because um, I want to also talk about your diet, okay? As uh, a lot of you, I'm sure you know, I, I've been not eating for, what's today? Day, what is it? Day 38. Yes, yeah, day number 38. So, um... I've been water fasting for like the past 38 days. There was a couple of days in there I had something real light. Um, like a little snack. And I had some juice. But for about 38 days I've been pretty much doing just water. The next four days I'm doing, uh, I'm doing an experiment on myself. I'm doing a uh, dry fast. A soft dry fast for the next four days until Sunday. Because I, I'm, I'm trying to see something. I want to see something. But yeah, in the next episode, we're going to talk about clearing out these blockages. Okay. Uh, clearing out these old traumas. Removing these old traumas. Removing these old blockages. And also, we're going to talk about your diet. Because remember, that's the sacral chakra in the gut, right, is, is, is all of your intestines. Okay. So the denser... I, I won't get all into it right now. We'll talk about it in the next episode. Because I want you to realize, you know, I've been... The stuff that I'm sharing with you are things that I do or have done. So I'm going to show you my path on how I've been able to awaken my Kundalini energy, which I like to call Sekhmet, Goddess Sekhmet. Fierce. She's fierce. Um, but how I've been able to do it and the processes and things that I've done. 
and then you can take and utilize what you see fit for you and uh, apply it to yourself and uh, like I said awaken your own divine energy life force so again I won't make this episode longer than it already is we're at 35 minutes so I will hear you on tomorrow and uh, we'll get into some some solutions okay some practical solutions that you can start to utilize immediately immediately all right so i hope you've enjoyed this episode um this is one of my favorite 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 conversations to have uh because again this is the only reason why i'm here the only reason why i came to earth was to explore consciousness so with that being said have a great day peace and unconditional love Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.